What's up guys? Welcome back to Keto Rewind. I'm Jess and I'm here with Dad today and I posted a video yesterday about my new plan for the month of April, alternate day fasting, and there were a lot of questions about it so I thought we'd make a great rebuttal type or Q&A type video to answer those questions since there was a lot of the same questions. So without any, let's just jump right into it. First things first, we are not medical doctors, we're not me medical professionals, we're not going to give out any medical advice. Before you do anything, please, please, please do your own research, talk to your own doctors, and figure out what is best for you. Don't Just because we say something that works for us does not mean it will work for you. Second thing, if you like this type of content, like these types of videos, want to see more of Dad, comment below, and also hit that subscribe button and turn on those notifications. And if there's any more questions you want clarification on, comment below and I'll try to do my best to answer. So, but let's get started. So I guess the first thing is we used the app Zero. We're not affiliated in any way with Zero. Um, but we have roughly an hour and 32 more minutes. I don't know if that's going to focus. An hour and 32 minutes before we are going to break our fast. And we've been fasting since today is Sunday night at 8 o'clock. So it's now Tuesday around 1030. We're going to break the fast at noon. So for a, for a fast like that, I consider that not really a long or a very extended fast. So I just would start with a protein-based meal when we break our fast. So that's like eggs, you know, some type of protein, just something gentle, eat slow, chew slow. But if we were doing like a 72-hour fast, at that point, I would start an hour before my fast and I would sit bone broth just to get the... Um, digestive system going. And but I might recommend Deb's homemade bone broth. The bone broth is a video really good. in one of these spots here is the cards. I'll link that if you want to make your own bone broth. <laughs> so let's start off. How do you feel after we're almost 40 hours? How do you feel? Each time I fast I find that it's easier and the reason is you kind of get to know how your body's feeling. So if I start to feel hunger I know to go grab my water, it's probably empty, and have a little bit of water. Or maybe ask Jess if she's going to make some tea, <laughs> and maybe she could throw one on for me too. And yeah. then those things kind of help me get through my fast mm -hmm. and get rid of the hunger. But other than that, um, my belly was growling a little bit last night when I went to bed, but I fell right to sleep and no problems. <laughs> so, yeah, but that, I, I, mine was growling too. But it's like a mental thing though. I know I'm not hungry, is. but it's like the your body's like, hey, need some food here. <laughs> so. And the good news is I lost some more weight. So when I got on the scale this morning, so the fast was good. <laughs> we will reveal that come the next, what is it? The week 61 of the update, you'll hear of what we lost this week. Shooting Rem for 11. Yeah, remember, not this week, for the month. For the month. <laughs> Um, you get to divide that, it's like three pounds, two and a half-ish, three pounds a week on average. So, um, but I will say that we're doing three of the, the three extended fasts or three 40-hour fasts. So Monday, Wednesday, Friday, we are fasting. Those are our fasting days. Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday are eating days. So I thought I'd start off with some of these questions and um, I will answer them to the best of my knowledge. I will say real quick before I get into that, let's talk about the challenges of doing this. Living with a family that doesn't, well, they, they fast, but they're just not doing this at the time being. They randomly do their intermittent fasting. So my hardest thing for me is when mom is cooking dinner, um, the smells in the kitchen do get to my head and I want that meatloaf, I want those Brussels sprouts that she sauteed up. You know, I want that. She made bone broth the other day, which requires a 24-hour cook in the crock pot. And it smelled so and, good. And it was a fasting day. It was, it it was, was awful. Mm -hmm. I went to bed dreaming about chicken soup. <laughs> Pretty much. So that's part of the mental challenge of it, though. And when you overcome it, you see you didn't die. You wake up the next morning, you're okay, you didn't eat it. But it is a mental challenge, and that helps work on your self-discipline. So I would say the, the, when, uh, when the smells or cooking smells are in the house, I would try to have your other family members 
maybe have leftovers, maybe do takeout, something where you're not smelling something cooking that's just getting to your head. So that's my one tip there. Um, and then what do we drink on fasting days? Um, black coffee. Um, so we are very strict when it comes to following the rules for fasting. There's a ton of other experts out there that say you can have other things in your coffee, but for me and dad personally, black coffee. Um, and then unsweetened teas, lots of herbal teas. There's lots of great ones that help extend when you start getting hungry, make a, cu make a cup of tea. I do chai and green. Sometimes I can get dad to do matcha and green, but most of the time he just does what's that, English breakfast tea? So, I mean, but you do you. You do what you'll drink. <laughs> I just like matcha and for the silly reasons. So, sparkling water has saved us both, would you say? I like to drink Bubbly and Topo Chico. Those are the two brands. There's no sweeteners. They're just flavored with fruit extract. Um, I try to just do one a day because I don't want to get in the habit of grabbing a can of soda or diet soda or something after we're all done. Um, the Bubbly is... is much better for you and and uh, but I try to just do one a day yeah I'll do one or two a day but if you're in a pinch and you're needing something it's a great choice it keeps you on track and it won't break your fast lots of water pretty self-explanatory yep. <laughs> so the last thing we drink a lot of or I should say I drink I'm trying to get dad to like it it's the apple cider vinegar tonic it's one of Dr. Berg's recipes um, it's basically like a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar a three finger pinch of sea salt or pink salt I should say um, 16 ounces of water and I chug it at once so I'll post the link down below um, for that you can make your own um, but that's basically all the liquids we do now I will say my afternoon coffee I don't I can't give up my collagen so my afternoon coffee I will put one scoop of unflavored collagen in my coffee I won't I draw the line there I love my collagen I do collagen every day, and um, personally for me, that's that's what I do. It I, there's it, the the verdict or the jury's out there whether or not it breaks a fast. Like if there's so many experts out there, I just know that's one thing I'm not giving up. I'm not giving up my collagen. It's protein anyways. It's not going to throw me out of ketosis. So, um, and then the next thing is electrolytes. Do we take electrolytes? If we start to feel weak. I would suggest, or when I when I start to feel weak or something, I'll just drink water first off. That's one of the first ways to like, chances are you're thirsty. If that doesn't work, I will take some electrolytes. I like the perfect keto pill capsule form where there's no sugar, um, and just some electrolytes. Um, do you take any? Um, rarely, if yeah. I, like I said, just if I don't feel good. Yeah, and for a shorter fast, like a 40 hour fast, you probably won't need it. But we do fasting a lot, so, but if you're new, you might need it and don't feel bad about taking some electrolytes or the apple cider vinegar tonic. It'll perk you right up. The other thing is, as your body kind of gets used to you fasting, I, I noticed the first few fasts, real bad headaches and, and you, you felt really down and you needed the electrolytes. As your body adjusts, um, now I can do a 40 hour fast and not even blink an eye. Don't, mm -hmm. no ill effects. Yeah, I agree. So. The more you do it, the easier it's going to be. So you just got to jump in there and try it. Um, okay, so the next thing is, what do we eat on eating days? This one is simple for us because we're doing keto. <laughs> um, but if you're not keto, don't stress about that. You just eat normally. We eat until, I don't even track what I'm, right, like all last week, I'm usually really big into tracking. Track those macros, track those macros. But last week, I had three eating days, or right, plus the weekend, so five eating days, two fasting days, I didn't track at all. Now, let me say this real quick. Um, let me say this. <laughs> Funny she tracked all my stuff. <laughs> Heck yeah, he has to learn what a serving size is. And that brings up a good point. You have to know ahead of time, what is the serving size? I've been tracking my macros over a year and a couple months. I know that I want five to six ounces of protein in my meal so it doesn't matter what the protein is i'm going to serve myself five to six ounces depending on activity and because males typically get more um they're bigger and they get um more protein for their body they i always give him six ounces so i've been training him you know for me i go for five depending if i've done lots of activity i'll go six ounces per meal 
So we stop or break our fast at noon. So we start with our lunch, which in our case, we typically do breakfast. So we'll do eggs and some type of bacon, sausage, you know, something like that, where it's a protein rich uh, lunch or brunch, I guess we can call it, and cooked in bacon fat or um, butter. So that's a good start. And then the afternoon, we'll have a little snack. I'll do a perfect keto protein bar. Usually is my snack. I look forward to those. Um, but you can do any type of uh, keto stack if you're doing keto that is if you're not doing keto do whatever um, don't a sweat it of, of, uh, a nuts. handful of nuts um, if, and it just listen to how your body feels when you do a lot of fasting your hunger kind of isn't so voracious in my opinion so I I eat and listen to my body often when I get a handful of nuts um, I'm thinking well I'm really not hungry I just wanted to chew eat, on something yeah exactly so you, Make sure you, your your mind's right. Yeah, and you're actually hungry. So, but listen to your body. What's that called? Intuitive eating? Mm -hmm. I forget the, there's a name for that. Um, so and then dinner, we'll have a normal dinner, um, which will be a protein with a veggie, um, keto. And then we cut it off around seven or eight, whenever dinner stops, and that starts the next fasting window. Repeat. Um, so let me go into the questions on the video and see what we have left to answer. Men, the fasting challenge is, the fasting approach is a mental challenge. It's gonna help you with your stress eating. For right now, I feel like I'm in the most stress I've been in a long time because I'm homeschooling my kids, I'm running a YouTube channel, I'm, keep, I'm cooking all my meals, I'm planning stuff, I'm like, I've got my parents, parents in town. Here. You know, my, like, it just, I, I can't leave the house. So I feel like even though we are, we are managing really well, I feel like it's still stressful just figuring out the school part. So even though I'm super stressed, those, those stresses make me want to eat. So when I'm fasting, that kind of controls those urges to eat. So in a reality, it's kind of helping me is even though I'm at the greatest amount of stress right now. So there's something to be said about that. Okay, so I'm just going to read comments. I'm not going to use names. Um, so when you drink your coffee, is it black? Yes. Yes. But that's the way I like it. Yeah. So that I, helps. Yeah, that will. I know if you've always had six spoonfuls of sugar and a half a quart of cream in it. <laughs> it's hard uh, to go it's black. It's going to be hard to jump right into black. <laughs> um, and then for the Zero app, um, my schedule is I just start, I hit the start button when I'm finishing my meal. I'll grab my phone and just hit start. And that will tell me what time I actually start. So it's 7.34 p.m. I know, you know, the next day when it'll be a 34. <laughs> like 1134 or something is when my fast is up so I just hit that button and you can hit the you can go in that map that app and you know choose a 36 choose a 24 it will walk you through how to do it um, let's see I just asked Jess when do we eat next <laughs> I finally get you to download the app though so now he can take it. he can take a peek how many calories do you eat on your eating days I follow what I normally would be doing. Um, I, for my height, weight, weight loss goals and all that, I can have, my goal is 1300 calories. I make sure on my eating days to eat at least until I'm full, but I'm not tracking them right now while there's three days this week that are fasting days, I'm not tracking calories this week or any macros. I'm just eyeballing protein. I'm aiming for the protein and following keto. I found if I keep my carbs under my limit, that the calories take care of themselves. Pretty much, exactly. And the fat too. Right. Do you drink bone broth during your fast? For this 40 hour fast, and being an experienced fasters, is that a word? It is. <laughs> we don't do bone broth. However, there are experts that say, if you're new, try the bone broth. If that, it doesn't, it won't wreck you. It's and only bone broth. Through. It'll get you through it. It'll train your body. So I, I highly recommend if you're new, Drink, sip on some bone broth. Only a cup. You don't need to have like a whole bowl of soup. Just a cup is all you'll really need. Especially if it's homemade and you know what went into it and you know it's going to be good for you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And that's collagen. Is That's the best way to get your collagen in. Did, did you increase your calories on the eating days or leave them the same? I would say I left them the same. same. I do try to eat, though, um, and eat until I'm full. But I'm not tracking. Let's Except see. for me. She's tracking me. <laughs> Heck yeah, I gotta teach him how to what a serving size is. So then at some point 
I don't have to use the scale for every, you know, it took me a year to learn what about how much or how big on the plate is like six ounces of chicken. It takes a while to learn that. And I, I'm very, you know, I get my muscle mass from this guy. So I'm, I like to keep it. I don't want to waste away and eat my, have my body eat my protein. I want my body taking from my fat. All right, did you have coffee, cream, anything else? I had clear liquids, basically. So black coffee, unsweetened tea, water, sparkling waters, apple cider vinegar, tonic. How does one do a man push-up? Or a real, I would call that a real push-up. At the end of this video, I think my dad took a video of me doing push-ups, so I'll it, it, um, add it at the end. Love your shirt, where'd you purchase it? We actually made them. We have a vinyl cutter. Um, I, I will try to add these to the merchandise on my shop link down below um, in my I, I'm just a little behind right now but these definitely <laughs> I got mine because somebody outgrew it mm -hmm. this so is a, an gotta... adult XL dad now is an adult XL which is like awesome so I've always been a two or three X guy but uh, <laughs> things are things are looking up yes heck yes I should insert that before picture when your dad says coffee, he means black right. Yes, correct. Only way to have it. <laughs> He's been, I've never ever in my life seen him put anything in his coffee. Until recently where I'm making him drink collagen. Because <laughs> somebody fell off the roof and shattered his ankle. So he has a bum ankle and I'm, I'm determined to make that feel better. When I was a kid, when my dad would take me places, he drank black coffee. So he would have a thermos. And if I wanted something hot to drink... I drank black coffee because he didn't bring cream, sugar, spoons. Um, you drank it out of the thermos black and that was it. Or go have something, go have a glass of water. So my <laughs> choices were limited. So I learned to drink it black. <laughs> and I think one of my million diets ago, it said don't drink dairy or something. So I stopped then, which made me already conditioned and trained for when I went keto to keep drinking black coffee. And then I think we had a shortage and I didn't have, I did, it was too lazy to run to the, the store. So I was like, well, I guess I'll try it black. <laughs> and less, it turned out I liked it. Less store trips. Yeah. What was the guy you mentioned? Thomas DeLauer. I'll link his channel down below. And I also will link Jason Fung, Dr. Jason Fung. He is pretty much my guide when it comes to intermittent fasting. Um, with, he also is, tr is specialized in treating patients with type 2, di type 2 diabetes. So I'll link his channel. He, his website is dietdoctor.com. Those are awesome resources um, to learn about fasting. He's got so much stuff. What do you think is the main change that caused the big week 60 weight loss? The only thing I changed was fasting. Everything else stayed the same. I've been eating clean for like three weeks. But I didn't have a four pound loss any other week until I did the fasting. Same with me. I'd been kind of, my, my weight loss kind of looked like a saw blade. So. <laughs> but that's, but it's a down, it's a normal keto trend. It's a downward trend, but there's ups and there's downs. There's ups and there's downs with an overall down trend. The fasting's put her to the down only trend. Can you share what you eat on your eating days? I'm actually going to film it all week. So towards the end of the week, I'll film it. Um, but I'm still just eating the normal keto meal plan, you know, you know, protein with some green veggies. And um, my fats come from butter, avocado, oils, meats, stuff like that. So I will film everything that we're making. In fact, after, later today, I'm going to also upload a new flour that we found that's called lupin flour. So I'm going to put a link here or there, wherever the cards is, and um, with that video, with that recipe. There was talk earlier in the week about scotch eggs. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever had a scotch egg, but it's a hard we boiled a, egg. We made a video, remember? Did we? Yeah. Did we do those? Uh-huh. Okay. So I'll put that link here, and that one's really good, and I would I, never heard I just of it. haven't seen it yet. It's only a rumor that, <laughs> that there was going to be scotch coming. eggs in it's the diet. It's coming. Do you still do the normal intermittent fasting on normal eating days, such as the 16-8? Yes, technically, I guess that's what you would call it because we're starting at eating at noon. So that's what I would, if I did a normal 16-8 fast, you know, I'm, when I'm not doing the alternate day fasting, I would start eating at noon as well. So I guess yes, but I'm breaking my eating and I'm just cutting it off at 8 o'clock when we're done because I have another fast to do tomorrow. So it seems like that's so close. 
<laughs> we don't have to fast again tomorrow. One thing that works for Jess that doesn't work for me is the one meal a day OMAD. And um, it doesn't work for me because if I, if I fast all day, I, it's too hard for me to put the brakes on and keep my portion size small enough because I'm so eager to eat it, that one meal. Um, having the two meals a day is no problem at all, but I really have, I, I, I get off track easily with the OMAD. Jess, on the other hand, has more willpower. <laughs> but the main thing is how you, you got to do what works best for you. Right now, if you can't do keto, try low carb. Just try to limit the carbs, you know, at the minimum. Cut, just try cutting sugar out. Do what you can do right now. Just incorporate the intermittent fasting because if you, um, if you can do anything, that's an easy start. Anybody can do that. It costs nothing to do intermittent fasting. And I also want to stress... Please check with your doctor, do your own research. We are not medical experts. We're not giving any medical advice. We are sharing our experience on this channel. So if you have any more questions, you can comment below. Okay, it is officially 12.30 um, and I'm about to break my 40 hour fast. It is currently, what day is it today? Tuesday at noon, 12.30. So um, I haven't eaten since Sunday at eight o'clock. So that's around a 40 hour fast and yeah, so this is what we're going to eat today. I'm going to film it all day and yeah, so stay tuned. This is my eating day. So um, check out the other videos wherever it is <laughs> and um, so you can get more details on the alternate day fasting. So today is labeled eat. So we're going to eat as normal and I'll show you what we're making. All right, this is what we're eating today. We're breaking our fast with meatloaf croutons which is basically leftover meatloaf, sauteed in a pan with some butter, and crisp them up on all the sides, and then we're gonna serve it with some a side of eggs. Okay, so when you have your little meatloaf that's left over, and you have uh, it sauteing in butter, when you turn it over, you'll see the nice little crunchies. The char, it makes it just so tasty. Let me turn this piece over here. See, on the other side, we got a little bit of a crust on there now. And it's so tasty. Um, so don't be afraid to reuse meatloaf and, and make it into croutons. And these also taste delicious on salads. And for like today, I'm doing scrambled eggs with meatloaf in there mixed in. So be creative and use what you have. So I'll be back with the finished product. But um, once again, these are just sauteed in some butter on a stove top. They're cut into about one inch size cubes, maybe a little smaller. And then we're just going to serve them with some scrambled eggs. Okay, on the side of the meatloaf croutons, I'm going to also fry up three eggs for me and three eggs for Dad. There's the finished product of the meatloaf crouton. See the char on the outside? So delicious. Um, but I think that pretty much sums it up. And we will see you at the next video. Week 61, we'll have the update with our three fasts this week and how much weight we lose. So if you want, comment below, how much do you think we're gonna lose each? How much would dad lose? How much will I lose? And if you can't tell, I'm built just like him. <laughs> <laughs> so we're pretty neck and neck when we lose weight, so. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. Say hi to dad, and say thanks for his input, and I'll see you at the next video. Bye-bye.